Welcome to Night Talk, brought to you by Miss Butler and Ebby Holiday Realtor. Hello, my name is Marsha Butler, and I'm with Ebby Holiday Realtors right here in Frisco. I know that selling and buying a home are among the largest financial decisions most people will ever make. So really, it's quite simple. People come first. And your satisfaction will always be my first priority. When I go that extra mile and you have a successful outcome, you'll be a happy client. Call me today, Marsha Butler, at 469-388-2818. I'm looking forward to visiting with you. Okay, I'm Brett Friedman, and joining me is Brendan Kowser. And we're going to go ahead and uh, dive right into it, as usual, to uh, volleyball. Uh, so, Brendan, volleyball is led by Coach Phillips. Uh, we lost to Frisco in five on Tuesday, and we also lost to Liberty in three on Friday. So that really did kind of push us out of the... Uh, Playoff picture. Yeah, the, the, yeah. There's three district games left, and we need to win out. And Liberty needs to lose out, so we'll be tied for that fourth spot. But then there's still tiebreakers, and I don't know how that all works. So um, it's uh, it's really unlikely. Yeah. To see this uh, 2016 volleyball team for the Knights uh, make it pl- to the playoffs this year. Yeah, our last three games are against Wakeland, who's the who's the best team in the district. Uh huh. And Centennial, who's um, Lower pack there, yeah. at two and nine, and then Lone Star, who's in last place, hasn't won a game yet. They're zero and eleven. So this Wakeland game is going to be the biggest game that we're faced with for, as uh, the season concludes here. Uh huh. We should uh, be able to see at least uh, the last two games of the season uh, be wins with the Centennial and Lone Star coming up. But yeah, that's a that's a really uh, upsetting thing for these volleyball girls. Yeah, but we only have one senior. We have a so lot of uh, young players, so, so there's a lot to look forward yeah, to. Yeah, it's practically going to be the same team next year uh-huh. going into it. Yeah, so it's uh, we should see a pretty good volleyball team next year with these uh, freshmen and sophomores getting a lot of varsity experience this year. So there's a lot to look forward to next year with Coach Phillips and that volleyball team. But for now, we're going to go ahead and move straight into football. Coached by head coach, Coach Story, and we are sitting at a pretty 3-1 and one in district. In a very pretty six and one overall, uh, we got the got the dub last week against Liberty at Toyota for our uh, homecoming game. Yeah, the score was thirty four seventeen. We doubled them up pretty well. Uh, we did face a, a little bit of struggles though with our run defense. Uh, Dimitri Jones, who's a gotta give him credit, he's a really good back from a uh, Liberty. He had one hundred and sixty nine yards, but we had a we did a lot of halftime adjust- adjustments there. And we hold them to only 50 after the half. And they were running a lot. They were, they run the ball a lot. They only threw for 125 yards and had a one touchdown through the air. So that final score was 34-17. to 17. But let's go ahead and uh, recap some of our key players in that game, Brendan. Yeah, Kyle Sadler had 204 yards on 11 completions and three of them, uh, three touchdowns. And uh, still had the two picks, though. But his QBR was 95.1, which is really good. And His uh, uh, favorite receiver this week, though, was a new guy here, Maxwell Hudson, yeah, who uh, overtook Colton Nelson. Colton Nelson uh, has really been his favorite overall, but this game he was really connecting with uh, Maxwell. He had two big receptions, and for uh, he had 75 yards, and that very long one for 55 yards for Maxwell Hudson, and a touchdown. He also had uh, two more touchdowns to Colton, though, so he is uh, still going to Colton in that red zone opportunity. Yeah, and as far as the run game, uh, Don Williams, of course. Dominating. You know, led the way. Had 187 yards, two touchdowns on 20 carries. So we're giving them, him the ball a lot. And he also had five catches for 54 yards, including a 30-yard catch. And uh, He's really been a threat all over the field. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And then on the defensive side of the ball, Daniel Boffman led the way with 15 tackles. And uh, Will McCollum had 11 of his own and that big interception late in the uh-huh. second half. And then sophomore Logan Brungart had thir- or, sorry, 11 tackles as well. So he's he's really proven himself as a young player on varsity. Uh, getting a lot of respect from those players. He has a lot of uh, tackles on the year. Uh, with uh, He's sitting at Logan Brungart, 93 tackles over the past seven games. So that's just huge for a sophomore, oh, yeah. leading your team in tackles, especially on this good of an independence football team. So, yeah, great player. Yeah, it really helps the defense out, too, when the offense is working really well, like ours has been. Kyle Sadler has 1,411 
yards on the year. And, and uh, Dom rushing has 1,300, pushing 1,400 on the year. 20 touchdowns for Tw- Dom. 20 touchdowns Crazy. For Dom. Yeah. And, I mean, <laughs> six 100-plus yard games, too, for Dom. So that's that's every game but one, I mean, right? you're really helping all over the field when you can get yeah. over 100 yards. Especially Kyle Sadler. They, I've mentioned this in the past. He's really been able to get the pass game going because of Dom, like, running a lot of those uh, play-action passes where most of the defense is just going for the run because they know Dom is such a threat on the run game. He's had uh, his long uh, is 78 yards, so he can really make an impact on just one play. So that's why they're really uh, pushing for the run ball. And he also, Dom himself, has 308 passing yards, or like receiving yards, and a touchdown on that side of the ball too. And then... Colton Nielsen, 714 yards, eight touchdowns. Uh-huh. So he's definitely Kyle's. Averaging 102 yards per game. That's crazy. Yeah, so unreal for a receiver. Colton Nelson has just been great for uh, this team. And uh, as we look at the district records here, Independence is sitting at the second seed, tied with Wakeland. We're both 3-1. and one. And uh, so we're above the mark here for the playoff picture. And uh, we play Wakeland on Friday night at the Star. They're three and one. We're three and one. We're tied for second place. And if we win here, we're gonna have a good chance at and being a able to title. go. Yes. So what would happen is if we win here, that would set us up for that second seed. And also, we expect Lone Star to win, and hopefully, we'll uh, we'll we'll get to play them for that last game of the season Friday at Memorial. And uh, if we beat Lone Star, it would tie our records, which would give us the. Uh, Tiebreaker because we uh, beat them with the same record. So that would mean Independence would get their first district title in football on their, what is this, the third year that Independence is open? So that'd be crazy to see uh, Independence win this uh, district. And as we move into playing Wakeland, they're coming off a loss to Lone Star. And earlier in the season, they absolutely destroyed Centennial, 56-14. And then they come back a couple weeks later and barely beat Reedy, the brand new school, 19-14. to So it'll be interesting to see what side of this team we see uh, on Thursday night. And they're uh, led by their running back, Jay Orjai, who has 597 rushing yards on the year, which isn't that impressive when you see Dom's numbers. But he does have the nine touchdowns, so that's that's pretty good. And I believe he did miss a couple of games, too, With an due injury, to an yeah. injury. Yeah. So he, he actually has made a pretty, like, Big impact on his team. He's got nine touchdowns, uh, 597 rushing yards, as you mentioned, and uh, he can really run the ball. Like He's going to be a big threat for this uh, Independence defense. They're really going to have to work on their run defense this week in order to get prepared for uh, Wakeland on Thursday. And then Wakeland's quarterback, Cooper Chandler, has 1,666 passing yards and 20 touchdowns. So he's a, he's a good leader for uh, their offense, too. And like we said, the win would set up us for it puts us in a pretty good place as far as the district standings. But the loss puts us at the third seed in the uh, district, and that would probably pair us up with uh, if the district's hold, if the records hold, it would pair us up for uh, Wakeland in the playoffs there. But we still got to take every game uh, one week at a time. Uh, don't cross off Wakeland or Centennial or Lone Star on these lists because every team we have to go out and uh, just go one and zero on the night. So we expect to see everybody here or at the Star on Thursday for our football game. And then we, since our game's not on Friday, volleyball, you can show up to their game on Friday against Centennial. And, and so, catch uh, one of the last volleyball games. Yep. Uh, thanks for listening to Night Talk. Make sure you follow us on SoundCloud, and make sure to follow uh, the IHS Sports Broadcast Twitter, at sports underscore IHS. I'm Brett Freed. My Twitter is chill underscore Brett. And I'm Brennan Kowser. My Twitter is at BKAUSE33. And make sure you're turning it, tuning in each week to get these uh, weekly updates with Night Talk on everything sports uh, across Independence. I know we have uh, basketball coming up, so expect to hear some basketball talk with uh, Coach Davis as well as some of his players. Uh, we're excited to see what they can do this season. Uh, looking for that first district win. And, uh, yes, just make sure you keep looking at uh, SoundCloud, making sure you're listening to everything. And make sure if you have any questions, go ahead and DM us at Twitter at sports underscore IHS or me or Brendan. Uh, Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week.